I'd like to call this meeting of the Town of Sheffield Select Board to order on March 20th, 2023. I do want to let you know that this meeting is being filmed by CTSB. If you'd like to film the meeting, just uh, let the chair know. Um, let's get to our first item, which is the approval of meeting minutes. I'll make a motion that we approve the minutes from the February 21st, 2023, February 23rd, 2023, and March 6th, 2023 minutes. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. We're going to skip our next item. Uh, the chief will be with us hopefully at our, our next meeting, so we'll go to number three, and that's discussion possible action regarding proposed installation of disc golf at the town park. Andy, you're on. Okay. Come on up to the microphone. And All right. Please state your name and your address, Andy. My name is Andrew Brooks. Uh, my address is 547 West Main Street, Canaan, Connecticut. Um, I just came here to kind of give people an update as far as how the, you know, the process of the disc golf course. Um, we've got nine baskets that are going to be loaned to us from the group down in Canaan because when they close the course down in uh, Canaan, they've got nine baskets that are ready to go. So that's huge because now we can spend the next year collecting money to build the tee boxes. Then the following year, concentrate on getting the money for the baskets and basically giving those back to them. And for those who may not be fully aware of um, Andy's work with the town on this, um, you want to install um, disc golf. Yep, a, a nine-hole disc, disc golf course that would be at the Sheffield Park, uh, and I believe it's lot 48, but on the map, uh, it's all laid out. Um, I've got everything laid out. I've got stuff you know, pretty much ready to go um, in the sense of with the baskets. Baskets usually go in first. Uh, that kind of establishes one of the two points. And then as, and then as we collect the money for the tee boxes, we just start building one tee box after the other. And if we get our money like I think we will, we'll be able to build all the tee boxes this year and then have enough money next year to buy the, the, the what will be 10 baskets, nine baskets plus a practice basket uh, for just like, a, just like a practice green at a golf course. Um, and so all I can say is right now, things look very promising. Um, I've okay. talked, uh, oh, no. The board had asked you um, about fundraising. Yeah. So what is your plan for that? Um, right now, it's, it's it's just what it kind of sounds like. I'm, I'm going to be getting the, uh, a, a list of, of at least um, uh, businesses in town that could want to donate. Uh, I've talked to Carl Zygman, the athletic director at Monument Mountain. Um, he's got a, what's called an ultimate team, which is another form of disc. It's just not disc golf. It's a different game. Uh, he's got people that are excited about that. Um, and so it's really going to be a grassroots, you know, person by person, piece by piece. Um, and so it's, it's just going to be private donations and whatever businesses choose to, to, to want to participate. Um, for example, if a, a, a business, uh, uh, Sheffield Plastics, I don't, is it still Sheffield Plastics? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. But for example, <clears throat> any business that would, $500 and we would put your business on the T sign saying that you sponsored the whole um, kind of like a permanent if you've ever gone to a, a golf tournament at Egremont back in the day where you give a you know, they put a sign on a tee box saying sponsored by uh, you know Kilmer Farm or whoever well this one is a permanent one it's it's on there for as long as the sign stays on there so is your plan to do this um door-to-door -door. yeah it's it's pretty much going to be a door-to-door -door kind of thing uh, a word of mouth um, we have other groups in the area uh, between Albany and Hartford that are always looking to help out a new a new uh, uh, project and as I uh, told you guys before as a result of COVID the sport of disc golf exploded um, they the, their membership doubled in three years uh, it's, so 
before had to do with the placement of a tee box? Yeah, yeah. And, it, and, and I can, whoever, whether it's me and, me and Bob, I'm, I'm, I'm going to propose this is where I'd like to put a, a certain tee box. If you guys say, we don't want it there, it won't go there. And I've already got kind of a plan B in case you guys say no. So again, it's, it's all just whatever, whatever you guys allow me to do. I'll say, this is what I'd like to do. If you guys say no, I've, I've got a plan B set up all right. So again, we're with us before yeah yes yeah. we've seen that and I think if I remember correctly this was going to be accessible this was going to be an accessible course with the possibility of maybe one hole that goes up a hill or something. yeah well well no actually the, it's it's only going to be a couple of holes that would be as far as kind of any kind of hand you know what, what you were talking about like handicap accessible or more reach wheelchair or yeah yeah see we, wheelchair accessible. wheelchair wouldn't be able to go up into the because this course goes up into the rocks okay. and whatnot so at this point in time it, you would be able to play one basket no problem and the way i've got it set up is you'd be able to use the existing path right um and then the second one depending on where the, tea, uh, the basket is placed, we could probably get two holes. And then the ninth hole at the very end would also be a pot. So there's, a, there's three holes that somebody could do. But again, it's a, uh, a, that's a tough task, unless it, you were, had a park that was already established with sidewalks and all the, all the you might say, all the amenities of a, of a large park. Because to put in nine holes, you need some acreage. Right. Um, so I, I, I just want to bring up the idea that maybe just the board needs to discuss it a, a little bit. So far, this town has been very reluctant to give any naming rights to anything. And I know a tee box sounds very small, but years ago we had the issue with someone wanted to to pay for the parking lot when it was, neither of you were on the board, but they wanted to pay for the entire parking lot to be paved and they would name it after someone. And the board did not, did not accept it. So I just want us to think whether, I don't think it should stop you. We can come up with some way to acknowledge people who have contributed, but I just want the board to think about that, whether we're opening a little bit of an issue with someone who donates wanting to be, you know, um, have naming or, or whatever. But, How yeah, did but the we'll worry about that. How out here become named? Because there's plaques dedicated. Those were pavers that we used to build the whole thing. You could mm -hmm. buy, everyone but could buy a thing for $200. Wouldn't, wouldn't the pavers be similar to what they I don't know. I'm just bringing the issue up yeah, because we I, have had naming issues. I don't disagree with you on that. It could very well be that it's something simil similar to that. Uh, but Andy, at this stage of the game, are you actually looking to install some baskets? Yeah, I'm, I'm at that point. Um, uh, the, the way that I, and again, I've talked to other clubs and whatnot, the way I think that would be the best way to go about it is I, I, uh, we will establish the South County Disc Golf Club. <clears throat> Excuse me. And with that, that the club will buy the baskets, i.e., if for some reason we put this thing in and then you guys say, we don't want it there anymore, we'll just, we'll, we'll take our baskets back kind of a thing. I think that's something that you, you guys can agree on. So, so from that standpoint, it's, uh, it's really kind of a case of, like I said, it, it's going to be a club operation um, with obviously all the cooperate you know all, all of the things that, that that will be done obviously will be cleared through you guys first we're not going in there with chainsaws <laughs> and clearing out lumber I yeah your email to me was questioning you know could a tea box go in a very specific location yeah. and it almost sounds to me like you're two years away from putting in tea boxes so i'm just trying oh to no 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 i'm, I'm th this year for tea boxes okay right because because like i said the fact that the money is now not, we don't have to come up with all the money all at one kind of a thing. I don't have to buy the baskets and put in the tea boxes. Okay. We've got the baskets. That's $4,000 that I don't have to come up with this year, which is about, as I, as I told you guys before, about half of the total so cost. What you need from the board is, is for Bob to go out and walk 
walk. Yeah, yeah, just the just to walk out. The, the main thing I, the, the, the one thing I want to make sure I don't do is I don't want to break so much as sod right. without everybody being on the same page yeah. saying, okay, this has been approved. Here's a, a, a tee box is approximately a nine by five patio. It's it, at the end of the day, it's a nine foot by five foot rectangle in the ground with pavers that you put in there and a wood frame. And right now, only one of them, uh, uh, as far as the nine of them, would be in the park itself. You know, like I said, if we can, I'd like to put it near the pavilion in what would be deep center field of the softball field, which is all the way out right, right near that one, the, the corner near the, uh, the, the horseshoe pit. And so again, if people say, we don't like that idea, no problem. I've got plan B already, all ready to go, which would be. I try to go out with the MD because your opinion is gonna matter certainly to me. I can't go out. It will matter like. to me. I would like to, because I'm, I'm yep. you know, this, is, this has evolved a little bit. So now we have a private club having facilities on a town facility. Okay, uh, and I'm sorry, Nadine, because I, I know that look. <laughs> I'm sorry, but what happens with the next club that wants to come around and be on town facilities? So I'd like to see as this evolves, whether this is something that legally we can do without opening. It's like putting a flag of somebody up on our, our flagpole. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I really want to think this through on that. I'm not against this. Depending also where these tea boxes go, we might have to go through an RDA on conservation. So if we get into that, most of yeah, this, if it's... According to uh, Donnie Ward, we, we wouldn't have to. So because, he's walked the course. Yeah, yeah Don, Donnie has gone out with me because when we talked about everything, we were going to use okay. the lower land, and that's when we talked about wetlands and okay, RDAs. Fine. So and when, but when, when we walked the, the rocks, he said, the beauty about this is we don't need permission to do anything. Okay, good. Was, so you're was covering right out of his mouth, so. You're covering a base that I was yeah. thinking was going to need to be covered. Yeah. So we have a few more bases to cover. But yeah. When you are walking with Bob, I'd love to go with you. Sure. You know, we do have plans to try and get more accessible pathways out there mm -hmm. in the park that might, with the two of us, if that's going to be a problem for you. No. No. Okay. All right. Okay, is there any other discussion on this? Anything else you think we need no, to know I about it? I just kind of wanted to know what was coming, that's all. Yeah, yeah, no, thank you. I appreciate yep. that. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Andy. I know you're very dedicated to this, and we do appreciate it. Okay, thank you very okay. much, guys. Thank you. Thank you, Andy. Okay, our next item is discussion and possible action on two curb cuts. Let's take the one at uh, 828 Bow Wow Road first. I make a motion that we approve the curb cut for eight. 38 Bowwell Road. Oh, excuse me, 838. 838 yes. is what I'm reading. Yep, it is. Um, Bowwell Road with the, uh, I can't read the name. Well, it's been signed. That's all we need to know, and that a culvert <laughs> is required. The chief is signed in the yes. 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 Yep. Um, With the condition of the black top paper. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And the culvert. Yep. Mm -hmm. I'll second that. Uh, any further discussion? No. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Right. Uh, right. We have a second curb cut. Which this one I can read. <laughs> 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 which is at uh, 1041 Bowell Road. Again. No, it's not at 1041. There's no. There's no. no um, there's no designation on Bowell Road. It doesn't have a number yet. So this is for uh, Ann Barrett at 1041. There's no. That's where Ann lives. Yes, yes, I'm. Yes, yeah. thank you. Yeah. There's no uh, street. Uh, right. There's, Cause there's nothing zero there Bow Wow Road at right. this moment since there's no address on this, mm -hmm. and it also has the required signatures. And I don't see any conditions. No. no. So you've made a motion. Mm -hmm. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Great. Next item is um, discussion possible action regarding BSC group proposal for work on Weetog Road. And this is uh, basically financed by the wonderful MassWorks grant that Rhonda got of a million dollars. 
And Rhonda, anything in particular you want to call to our attention on this? So when you re reviewed this earlier at a working meeting, the question was regarding the exclusions and reaching out to the trustees of reservation to see their opinion. So in um, response, they have said that she, Julie Richburg, from the trustees of reservation, has said that she certainly would be willing to work on finding some financial help for the exclusions if and when they became Really? Excellent. That's good news. Does it mean that she will find right. it? Oh, she'll, yes, she may not find it, but she'll work on it. She's also available to work with the survey work and some of the implementation around the bear species work. But um, she doesn't currently have any financial resources for the project, but she doesn't mind looking. Okay, great. So that's going to um, BSC so they can reach out to her at the appropriate times. Uh, since she wants to be involved in some of the rare oh, species. Yes, yes. The great. Will involve, um, Excellent. The okay. For me, there's definitely going to be an additional cost on these exclusions because we already know there's rare fauna and issues in that area. So some of these exclusions are definitely going to be needed right out of the gate. So. I'd like to know what the additional costs may be for adding these. What if BSC can give us some kind of estimate, which I know will be difficult. Um, and if that is the case, that uh, we start looking for grants to pay for that going forward, because I believe our budget is already stretched pretty thin between construction and engineering. For that 600 we foot have section. No construction this is all engineering. Oh, this is that million is only for engineering, mm -hmm. not construction. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. But you do make the point that it would be good to encourage Julie to start looking. Right, because we already know that it's there. We this is not a question of whether the rare or endangered species are there. It's just a question of can we manage around them. So maybe that's a reach out to Julie. I, I don't know. Do you think there's any possibility that BSC Group at this point can give us any estimates? I, I don't know how they're going to give us estimates. That's what I, stuff that we don't know that we yes, need. Right. We don't have anything concrete saying that you need any of these additional services at this point. Okay. Because we you're thinking the worst case scenario. Um, which no, is I'm thinking that there is been marked rare species that we'll need a botanist for, and that's one of the exclusions in this contract. Mm -hmm. Right, to more extensively map out. So they're gonna map out some of it, but if it needs more extensive work. So, I mean, I'll do whatever you want me to do, but I'm... So I'm wondering if this um, page that, uh, Bob, the exclusions, were shared with, with Julie, whether that would give her they at least were. enough. They were. They were. So she already has a heads up. Yeah. So maybe it's just a sharing. You know her, don't you? Yes. Yeah. So maybe it's just sharing that this is going to be needed money potentially sooner than later. Most grants, if you get them, if you don't use all the money or you don't need it, you can turn it down. But she's got to figure that out because sometimes grants givers don't like that where you go get money and then you don't use it. So, and then once we do the engineering, the next step will be, is this paying for all of the engineering, Rhonda? We're hoping to pay for all of the engineering. So then the next step will be to start on the construction and we'll have to get money for that. Okay, so what you're looking for is approval of this contract in yes. engineering. Yes. Okay. So I'd like to make a motion that we go ahead and sign the contract with um, B B BSC Group uh, for the engineering of the project on Weetog Road uh, not to exceed $310,200 without prior written permission. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. The next item we have is um, discussion possible action regarding general bylaw fees for animals. That would be helpful. <laughs> <laughs> the board held a public 
preparing and they set fees for the general bylaws, the fees that go on the lease section and the general bylaws. And when you, we got the animals, we took a look at what was proposed. And I don't even know where the original proposal came from. Oh. It might have come from the animal control. And so you took a look at those and you thought that some of those were a little bit too high to go from 50 to 100 to 300 right off the bat without possibly a warning type thing. And so you lowered those a little bit. But you don't have a general bylaw that allows our animal control officer or anybody else in town to enforce what you've set fines for. So there's a section in Mass General Law that deals with running in large rabies certificates, you know, all of these things that you set fine, the confinement, um, kennel licenses. Um, so you have to decide if you want to put a, a forward a vote to use, to follow that bylaw and to allow our animal control officer to enforce that bylaw. And if and when you do that, there are fines that are set by the state, which is what the original ones that you looked at, that cannot be changed. And basically, the first is 50, the second is 100, and the third is 300, and fourth and fifth is 500. So what we had also discussed, and I don't know if we've heard back from council, since these are Mass General Bylaws, do they already apply to us? Or do we have to adopt another thing? It says that we can adopt stuff that's consistent with those mass general bylaws. Yes. So we don't know whether just because they're mass general bylaws, they apply without, without us doing any further work. Okay. You know, they just apply. So we have to, we, we, we do need to find that out. They do apply. They're mass general bylaws. Well, then why are we having to do anything on this? Because you don't have anything in our bylaws that gives anybody in town the right to enforce that. So what are you asking us to do? I'm very confused as to what it is. I'm not asking for any action. I'm making you aware. I. You can't use these fines at all with the way you set them. And you can't use them unless you give someone the authority to regulate that section of the bylaw. Well, currently it's given to the clerk. This bylaw, this mass general law, gives it to the clerk. That's probably not the person we want to have. The clerk, have it. meaning the town clerk. Uh, it just says the clerk. <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't write this stuff. It just says the clerk. Okay. So. It just it needs more work. Okay. And understand that when the bylaws come back from the attorney general and you're ready to implement the fines, these sections of fines are null and void. Okay. Yes. Yes. Thank and you. And it'll come forward again. <laughs> to, yeah. Yes, thanks for the I'm, not, I'm glad I'm not the only one that felt we were in the mud a little bit there because... Well, it was very foggy. Yes. <laughs> Remember when we recodified mm -hmm. the general bylaws that we're still wait, waiting to hear about from the Attorney General? What we wanted to do was recodify them as they were, not add anything. So this would be an addition. An yeah. addition. Oh, okay. See. Okay. But all that work we went through on yeah. the fines it was are null, task, null yeah. and void. Okay, so that's a to-do. Another job. So um, the next item is uh, discussion possible action regarding the memo for the board administrators. This is Josh's, Josh's, oh, yes. Josh's time. And at our, I think our last working meeting we had discussed this and Rhonda had asked to have the yellow area added. Mm -hmm. So I tried to just make it, but this is all subject to review, editing, etc. And I also, I think as we discussed, I added on some of the items from the Rene LeClaire memo when we faced this issue of um, overreach of yeah. Who, who's time. Yeah, in charge of his time. Yes. Yeah, I, th I thought that the memo was, was good and I like Rhonda's edition. Do you need more time to absorb it or? No, I, I just, yep, yeah, I, I agree, it seems fine to me. Rhonda, do you have Are any you other sure? you thoughts? Or? Yep. Okay. I'll make a motion that we go ahead and uh, prepare this memo and send it out to the Board of Health, Conservation, Planning, and Zoning as it relates to our new board administrators. 
rules. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Next item is um, discussion possible action regarding purchase of Newton devices for emergency services. Um, Rhonda, would you like to explain that or you, you want me to try and explain it? So Newton devices are to help a fire department or police department with electric vehicle crashes. So they're a device that can help them for the safety of everyone involved. And um, the Board of Selectmen discussed the possibility of purchasing them for both the police and the fire departments. It came out in the MMA newsletter. I believe it was developed by the Newton Fire Department. And MMA had a whole article about it in the MMA newsletter. And, and so we reached out to um, Chief Allred, and he, thought, he said that the conversation had come up with the officers in the fire department because they've already had an accident that involved an electric vehicle. Apparently, they don't shut off always. Right. And this device, which I think plugs into where the charging unit is, we'll shut it down. shuts them down. There's no possibility of the vehicle starting up again. And what is the cost of this? $850 to $875 each. That's pretty reasonable. Let's get two. Yeah, please. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll make a motion that we uh, order two Newton devices, one for fire and one for the uh, police department. Would you like to add on how we're going to pay for these? Oh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't we take that money out of the Berkshire School account since it's for public service? Thank you. Thank, thank you. you for thank you for the nudge. <laughs> I, I will second that. Um, I would like to say that for discussion that uh, electric vehicles come with their own certain set of new issues, mm -hmm. especially fire related or accident related, um, and part of that was why they were developed because they could go into gear and start up on their own after an accident because it causes a malfunction. This doesn't kill the power totally, but it kills the mechanism for the car. Okay, thank you here. for that clarification. So, but well, okay. It does make our police and fire safer, safer. people much safer. Yep. Uh, okay, so we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 And uh, next item is discussion possible action regarding ADM which is an architectural firm, uh, model for town hall. You want to explain this one also to us, Rhonda, please? So we had talked with EDM about a space needs for the town hall building, thinking that possibly we would want to refinish the upstairs and third floor of town hall. And when they came in, they took a look at what we have and told us that there's more than enough space, depending on how it was arranged. And so they've come up with um, a couple interesting proposals. And so we were working with them to get a finer design that we could really look at. In the meantime, we sent ADM the structural report for the building. And a structural engineer has come out and he's going to do up a report which prioritizes any issues that we may have. He did say that we do not have any major issues, that there are some small issues in the building that should be correct. But he was very surprised and happy to say that our building is very sound and safe. That's good. Um, so I'm going to propose that before you make a decision on how you want to do the model for the renovations is that we wait until we get that structural report and they're going to mesh the two together and kind of come up with a, a list on what should be done first, prioritize the list, and then put a cost to each one. So before you make any decisions on this, I'd like to have both of those reports. In here. Okay, so we'll put just a hold on this for the time being. Okay, great. Our next item is um, discussion possible action regarding centenary celebrations. It's been brought to my attention, and, and, and Nadine, you probably already know this from the Senior Center, that Anna Luffingwell is going to turn 100 in April. She's currently in a long-term care facility in um, Great Barrington. And then we have a second uh, person, uh, uh, Sally Cook, who's going to turn 100 in, in December. So we have a little bit more time on that. Um, but I'm just wondering if um, I don't know if uh, Anna attends senior center events at this time or is more in place at the long-term uh, care facility. But 
I'm just wondering if this board would like to do something special, like maybe a card or possibly some flowers that could be delivered by one or more members. I mean, this is a big event. <laughs> it is a milestone. It is a huge one. Yeah, I mean, I'd love to uh, to acknowledge the uh, the birthday, but um, are we allowed to spend town money on such things? That's always I'll, the I'll question. Pay, I'll pay for the flowers. <laughs> for the flowers. It's, it's fine. I'll pay for the flowers. Okay, then I'm you know? fully in support. Yeah, and, I'm, and, and I'll get the card. Too, I, I'm just wondering if there would be something, again, your position at the Senior Center and the head of COA, whether there's people that you'd like to have start signing that right now. I can so certainly ask Kathy to So it has a that. really nice... Sure list of people. Yep. I, I think her birthday is April 9th, but okay. I'm not positive. I'll find out. I'll um, get right on it. But uh, I'll take care of the flowers. No problem. Okay. Okay. If we want to do a birthday cake, <laughs> yeah, I can make a cake. Can make a cake. <laughs> too. I can make a cake too. <laughs> if somebody else wants to do that. Okay. Wonderful. So um, our next item is a discussion on um, possible action regarding request to use the covered bridge for a ceremony. We all have that information in our packet. I thought this, the request was a little vague. Do we know what kind uh -huh. of ceremony? Oh, yeah. yeah <laughs> yes, do, yes. Do we know what kind of ceremony this is? Yes. Um, oh, it's a wedding ceremony. I'd like some more details. Did she say kind of? Hey, whatever. <laughs> okay, <laughs> we're not to judge. And it does look like they listed the amount of people. Mm -hmm. We don't. We don't know the time. We don't know whether it's going to be a busy weekend or uh, you know. We just uh, and, and maybe this date. Uh, did she say a date? Let me just look at this again. Sometime in the May. other place. Yeah. I think we need more information. Yeah. So think about this for a minute. You're not going to close the bridge anyway. You never have right. done that. Right. Right. Anyway. Um, so if someone wants to have a gathering down there, normally you don't have any reason to say no, um, except you don't want anything adhered to the bridge. I'm right. Assuming. And you don't want anything blocked, and you want them to be aware that the public is allowed to come there, launch canoes, walk around, you know, so none of those are restricted things. You know, we need to develop the sheet. You know, when you're putting that letter together, Let's just make a sheet so that if people call in, you can just, you know, and do we even need to have it approved by this board or it's an issue that we have approved by our town administrator the way we do sign permits right now? Well, I mean, you're, the question is, is do we even need to approve it? If 30 people showed up down there and they had a ceremony and we didn't know about it, what difference would it make? Well, mm -hmm. But we do know. It, it's we nice do that know. they notified <laughs> us. Yes. And yes. I think yes. I don't see any reason why not to approve it. No, I don't either. Just that they're aware that it's continuing to be open and that people. So we'll just have Rhonda send a letter, basically, saying what she just told us. So, so we'll, moved. Okay. Second. And going forward, um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Going forward, do we want our town administrator to handle these issues? Yeah, I see no reason to drag okay. it before the whole board. So I'm going to say that's our a... our town administrator is okay with handling... If somebody comes in like this, you you know what you've got to send, send them. Send them the letter. So I'm going to take that as a motion, Nadine. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Great. So our next item is... Oh, okay. Um, discussion possible action regarding Governor Healy's creation of a rural affairs director. So I, I drafted a, a letter. This is a really big deal that we now have, after I'm going to tell you probably 10 years of work by all the RPAs uh, west of, of Worcester, Senator Mark, Senator Hines, Senator, who was before that, uh, Downing, Smitty, our entire delegation, to get somebody focused on rural affairs in the governor's office, to cut across housing, to cut across Chapter 90, to cut across everything, school aid, etc., that deals with rural, rural communities rather than somehow we get mushed across. So she just announced this this uh, last week, and I thought, well, why don't we say thank you? And why don't we introduce ourselves as Sheffield to the governor? So I tried to make it short and sweet. Mm -hmm. 
and you know copied Senator Mark and also um, Smitty, so they're aware of what we're up to. So I make a motion that we send this letter to Governor Healy. I'll second that. Okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 So I think we're to the point where we're just going to give an update on um, the highway garage. And Rhonda, uh, do you want to um, do that for us? Sure. So this morning we met with the designers for the to begin the kickoff meeting, essentially to begin the design for the new highway garage. So it was two hours. A lot of ideas were hashed out, discussed. Of course, we're going to get this design with all of our wishes. We may have to X out some of those if we vote on depending on price. But at least they know what we would really like. They left here and visited um, our current highway garage and then the site, which is on Berkshire School Road. So they're fully aware and have seen everything. Um, and so we're looking forward to be moving forward. They're going to type up the notes come back with some type a, of a drawing, wish list type thing for us to take a look at and then we'll fine tune that a little more as we go along. Any additions? No, Rhonda covered it fine. Nadine? All set. Great, okay. So let's go to board member items. Bob? Uh, I'd just like to give uh, some credit to our fire department for this last snowstorm. I know it was back a little while ago, but they not only assisted with the Mount Washington rescue, they also were managing calls in our own town at the same time. We just have an incredible deep pool of people that there most There were a lot of calls that day. There were a lot of calls. <laughs> and we just have the depth of youth all the way through very experienced people and uh, I'm very proud of them. Great. We all are. Uh, is that it, Bob? That's it. Nadine, how I, about you? I don't have anything, Renee. Thank you. Okay. I don't have anything. Uh, Rhonda? I just have one thing. We had received a letter from a resident who was aided by two of our part-time police officers, Matt Mercer and J.C. Calix. I think that's how you say it, Calix T. Um, who stopped and helped some woman above and beyond and made sure that she got her car not only started, but waited with her and, and, and got her home safely. And it's not often that we receive a nice letter acknowledging employees who have done such a great job. And so I want to just extend a thank you to both Officer Mercer and Officer Colex, and maybe even a letter from the Board of Selectmen, maybe. Yeah. Wonderful. I think that would be yeah. a great idea. Yeah. Great. Individually to each of them, I think, would be a nice idea. For Wonderful. Sure. Yep. All right. Um, how about um, public comment? Martin? Martin Mitzoff, South Under Mountain Road. I uh, just want to take this opportunity to uh, say happy spring, first day of spring. <laughs> <clears throat> We've, we all deserve it. Um, and also that the Crossroads Exhibition, the Smithsonian Crossroads Exhibition, is going to open up um, on Sunday, May, March 26th, run through May 6th, about six weeks. Um, this is an incredible, incredible uh, badge of honor for the town of Sheffield. It's a Smithsonian exhibit um, that has traveled through five previous towns in Massachusetts. We were one of the lucky ones as well to get awarded the, the exhibition. It's also an incredible opportunity that our, li our library director has reached out. We've got related exhibits at Dewey Hall. There's an art show, a juried art show that's taking place there. There are a number of uh, presentations that will also be taking place at Dewey Hall. We're working with the Historical Society. We've reached out, really the trustees and the director have reached out and, and really made this a very community-oriented event. Um, there's full information on this on the Bushnell Sage website. There's a special web page devoted to Crossroads. And I encourage anybody in the community and anybody outside the community uh, to, to come and take a look at this. It's, it's a wonderful exhibit. And it really talks about what, ha what has happened in rural America over the last hundred years or so. What are the changes that have taken place? What are people's perceptions about those changes and how have they adapted? Um, really uh, an illuminating event. So 
thank you. Um, any questions, reach out to us, to me, or to our library director, Dina Caswell. But I Thanks. think this didn't happen by luck, Martin. It happened by a lot of work, by a lot of people. Correct. And an extremely competitive situation yep. to bring this to Sheffield. So kudos to you. Thanks. And the, the folks that helped along with the library director and the trustees. Thank you. Thank you. Barb? Barb Reeves, 571 Berkshire School Road. Um, I am excited about this, and I think con considering that you're going to be writing a letter uh, to the governor to thank, I think an invitation or a thank you for this would be appropriate at the same time. Well, you know, Martin, I don't know how many of us at this table are going to the Senator Marks uh, uh, event on Saturday, but if you can give, get me some small posters or even a couple of some things, I'll take it with me and I'll hand okay. those out. Oh yeah, that's okay. Give me a, give me about six of them. Okay. Thank you, Barb. Good. Appreciate that. Can I follow up with one thing? Per person to, to Barb. So there is a um, there's a legislative reception. I don't know why exactly it's called legislative reception, but on March 31st, which is a week from this coming Friday, and Smitty and Senator Mark and others will be there. And Barb had mentioned to me about inviting the, the rural, um, sorry, the rural affairs director. We can sort of try to make that happen in the next couple of days to, to extend. Hasn't been appointed yet. Oh, they haven't been. Okay. No, just now up the job I see. Okay. It was just. It was just. <laughs> It was just literally announced, I think, last week. Okay. So they're working on the description. Okay. But, yeah. Okay, and apropos of that, we are looking for volunteers to fill little one-hour, two-hour slots as docents. I'll talk to you. Okay. Uh, at the library and at Dewey Hall for the juried art show. So um, I put my dibs in for Thursdays from 4 to 7 p.m., there are plenty of slots open, and we're still looking for those volunteers. So, thanks. Okay. So the community should contact the library to exactly. offer their services. Yes. And, and yeah, you can either call the library or come in. We've got a calendar, or you okay. can actually fill in those little. Excellent. Uh, Sounds like fun. Any other? Any more pu public comment? All right. Then I would ask for a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you for being with us this Aye. evening.